Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History for an episode in our series That Dress. This time around, bells are ringing for Grace Kelly as we look at the beautiful wedding gown designed for her wedding to Prince Rainier III of Monaco by Helen Rose. The wedding occurred on April the 19th, 1956. Now this was the religious ceremony. The civil ceremony had taken place the day before. Now, of course, this was a royal wedding, but in many ways, it was also a Hollywood wedding. Let me explain. Grace Kelly was under contract with MGM. She was supposed to start filming Designing Women, but she had to drop out to marry her Prince Charming. MGM let her out of her contract on the condition that they allow her to film and televise live her wedding from Monaco, which they did to 30 million viewers around the world. The first big surprise regarding the wedding dress is that it wasn't designed by Edith Head. Edith Head and Grace Kelly were very, very good friends, but MGM insisted that an MGM designer produce the wedding dress. And so they called upon the incredibly talented and elegant Helen Rose. Now this was fine with Grace. Helen and Grace were also good friends and had a wonderful working relationship. In fact, Helen Rose had worked on a lot of Grace Kelly's movies, including her beautiful wardrobe from High Society. This working relationship extended to the two ladies working together on the wedding dress. And remember, they didn't have an awful lot of time to get this dress together. It was Grace's idea that they look back on some of Helen Rose's earlier designs and that they source the MGM archive. And I think we can actually trace the evolution of Grace Kelly's wedding dress to here. This is Elizabeth Taylor wearing the dress she wears in Father of the Bride, 1950, designed by Helen Rose. Now, Elizabeth loved this dress so much that she commissioned Helen Rose to construct something similar for her 1950 wedding to Nikki Hilton. You can see it has that satin bodice with the lace overlay and high neck, but I think the biggest influence on Grace Kelly's wedding dress was definitely from 1952's Invitation, starring Van Johnson and Dorothy McGuire, with costumes, of course, by Helen Rose. This is the gown that Helen designs for Dorothy McGuire in the movie. And look how very similar it is to Grace Kelly's wedding dress. Really, it's only those big peplums on the side of the gown on the right, almost like an 18th century pannier that really separates the two dresses. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see some detail. Grace's collar is a little bit higher and of course there are the buttons. Now I can't tell in either version if the bodice is strapless or if it has spaghetti straps so fine that you cannot see them beneath the lace. But either way, this long sleeved lace overlay on this gown with a large pleated cummerbund, basically it's the same dress. And just to drive this home, here again is the wedding dress from Invitation. Here is Grace Kelly's wedding dress. And really all we have to do is make the neckline a little higher, add a row of buttons, get rid of those peplums. And if we add Grace Kelly's skirt here, it's essentially the same dress. But Grace wouldn't have minded this. She was no bridezilla. She loved Helen Rose's work. And I can imagine her looking at the wedding gown from invitation and saying, that's the one that would work perfectly. Let's just tweak it a bit. This is the final sketch for the gown and I'm just going to zoom in because it's such a lovely sketch and we all love fashion illustration here at the UFH, don't we? One of our guilty pleasures. Here's a nice high resolution image. It comes from the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Grace donated her wedding dress to the Philadelphia Museum of Art because of course she was a Philadelphia girl and a few years ago they exhibited the dress 
Fit for a Princess was the title of the exhibition. Here's some statistics for you. The dress was made of peau de soie, 125 yards of silk taffeta, 100 yards of silk net, tulle, 125 year old Belgian rose point lace and seed pearls. Nice, right? It was constructed like this. There was a bodice with that long sleeved lace overlay, skirt with support, an overskirt, two petticoats, one of which was attached to the garment. The attached petticoat was smooth so that the dress would hang smoothly and the separate petticoat that went beneath was flounced to provide that necessary volume. The dress cost $80,000 in today's money, but hey, it was a present from MGM and they had plenty of money. And evidently, it took 30 seamstresses six weeks to put this dress together, and I can well believe it. Here's another detail, and take a look at the side, and you can see that this wasn't a completely circular new look skirt. Now, the new look silhouette, the skirts had become basically completely circular by the mid-1950s, but this really speaks to a more peplumed skirt that was popular at the onset of the new look and that Helen Rose, of course, plays with in the costumes for invitation. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see how the skirt is constructed and how those pleats and folds and the distance between them actually gives that peplumy, pannier type effect. Also, look at the folds on the waistband, which is really like a cummerbund, and look at that lace and, oh, that wonderful embroidery on her veil. Now, MGM insisted that the veil be very, very fine so that you could always see Grace Kelly's face. After all, this was going to be televised. The embroidery around the bottom of the veil has flowers and lily of the valley because that is what Grace carried in her hand along with a Bible, which I'll discuss in a second. But there were also a pair of lovebirds embroidered to speak to the romance of Grace and Rainier. Instead of wearing a tiara, which is sort of ubiquitous at a royal wedding, Helen Rose designed this Juliet cap with three points and it's constructed using some of that antique Belgian lace, seed pearls, and these pretty little orange blossoms fashioned out of waxed paper. Isn't it gorgeous? So delicate. Grace's shoes were designed by another American designer, David Evans, and here they are. They're covered with a lace that imitates that Belgian lace used elsewhere. They feature a seed pearl detail, but here is the nifty thing. Grace Kelly asked David if he would somehow add a copper penny to her shoes. Of course, a copper penny is traditionally good luck for a bride. And when the Philadelphia Museum of Art x-rayed these shoes, they found the penny. It is inserted into the underneath of the arch on the shoe. You see it? There it is. In Grace's hand, she carried a Bible that was a gift from a friend and MGM employed an MGM designer to cover it in lace, embroidery, and seed pearls. And there is the designer, the artist, doing just that. In my opinion, this gown struck the perfect note. It was utterly of its time and fashionable, and yet it wasn't too trendy. It was timeless. It was regal, but not stuffy. It was glamorous, but not too flashy. Generally, it got good reviews. However, the columnist Elka Chase, who you may remember was also an actress and featured in my favorite movie, Now Voyager, as Betty Davis's kindly sister-in-law, she was in attendance and wrote, the dress was charming, but not a superb one. The New York Times did a bit of trade propaganda here, the loveliest example of the American product, but one journalist went bananas and said that her train was flowing like a river of whipped cream. 
basically this dress was a hit. It was certainly a hit with every bride-to-be in the couple of years following Grace's wedding. Take a look at this sewing pattern from 1957, I believe. I'll just zoom in and you can really see this obsession with the lace overlay over the strapless bodice. And this gown goes on to influence brides, doesn't it? There's Kate Middleton at her wedding to her Prince Charming, and you can see that her gown is very inspired by Helen Rose's design for Grace Kelly. In many of the photographs from Grace Kelly's wedding, including the televised ceremony, she looks a little bit anxious, doesn't she? And I don't blame her. She was a 26-year-old girl leaving behind her country, her life, her career to move abroad and marry a man she didn't know very well at all. This is why I love this picture. The ceremony's over and there is Grace tucking in and relaxing. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little episode of That Dress here on The Ultimate Fashion History. You can contact me through my website, amandahalley.com, or you can just drop me a message through Facebook. And while you're over there, join our Facebook group. We sure have a lot of princesses over there, but they are all really nice ones, like Grace Kelly. Check out our books at our publishing company, Dean Street Press. I'll be back very soon with more on the UFH. So just click that little circle to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.